Today we're going to learn the eight best school cafeteria tabletop games. Let's go back to school. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris and welcome to Playing Games. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Today is every parent's Christmas. Back to school day. Summers are a great time for kids to learn new card games, but tough luck kids, summer's over. Time to get back to school. However, just because your school doesn't let you play cards, that doesn't mean you have to stop playing competitive tabletop games. Let me show you a few of my favorite school lunch cafeteria games. Now I know what you're thinking, don't waste my time showing me how to make another origami fortune teller. We don't have to learn now, but stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll show you how. Cafeteria game number one, click football. The object of the game is to have the most points before your cafeteria monitor takes away your football. What you'll need is a piece of paper and two people. Tear off a piece of paper. Fold a piece of paper into thirds lengthwise, and you'll have a piece of paper like this. Fold triangles from the bottom to the top. Find a pocket here and just tuck the rest of the paper in. Get creative and make your football look a little bit more like a football. And now you're ready to play flick football. The rules are simple. You have four downs or tries to flick your football to the edge of your opponent's side of the table. It must be hanging over the edge to count. If it falls over, your turn is over. Or if you take more than four downs, your turn is over. If you do get it to the edge, your opponent drags a finger along the edge to confirm that it's a touchdown. After a touchdown, a player then attempts to flick an extra point kick. Hold the football with one finger like this, or this, or this. Your opponent makes a goalpost by putting their thumbs together and their index fingers pointing up. You then flick the paper football into the air. If it goes through the goalpost, you earn an extra point. Scoring, touchdown is worth three points and the extra point is worth an extra point. If you don't like that point spread, you do you. The next player's turn then begins on their edge of the table, and now they have four downs to score. On your fourth down, if you don't feel confident you can make a touchdown, you could also try for a field goal. Pin your football where it lies after the third down and flick it like you would for an extra point. If you're successful, you earn two points. Feel free to add your own variations and side rules. It's a great game, and I hope you enjoy it too. Cafeteria game number two, coin basketball. All you'll need for coin basketball is a coin and probably some protective eyewear. The object is to get the most points by making baskets with your coin. Flip the coin to see who goes first. The player then spins the coin and tries to stop it between their thumbs. If they can, their opponent will make a basket with their hands and presses it against their body, acting as a backboard. The shooter then flicks the coin at the basket. Note, you must keep your index fingers on the table or the shot does not count. If it goes in the hand basket, you score two points and give the coin to your opponent for their turn. If a player misses, they give the coin up but score no points. You have to start spinning your coin near the edge of your table. You can try to propel it forward oh to get it closer to the basket. If they hit their opponent in the eye or the tooth, God have mercy on their soul. Ooh, you okay? If you can pivot your index fingers without having them leave the table, you can try for a slam dunk. While it's only worth one point, it feels pretty good to do it. While in defense, you can use a straw to blow air and try to knock your opponent's coin off the table. Try not to be annoying with the straw or you won't be asked to play again. When you run out of time, whoever has the highest score wins. Jello. <laughs> it doesn't count if it goes into jello. And that's coin basketball. Cafeteria game number three, pencil pole vault. Pencil pole vault is a great game to use those little nubby pencils you have. Like these ones. The gameplay is simple, bounce pencils off the table into your cup. On the count of three, begin, and the game ends as soon as the player gets all three of their pencils into separate cups. Each player will take a certain amount of pencils. We'll use three per player. And for every pencil, you'll need a cup. On the count of three, you'll take your pencil and bounce it off the table and try to get it into a cup. Three, two, one. And that's Pencil Pole Vault. Just reset your cups and play again. Cafeteria game number four, Pencil Sticks. Here's a great game to play with all those extra pencils you have. You'll want 10 or more pencils to play this. First, you take your pencils and place them in a pile on the table. You'll want to make sure all the pencils are touching one another. The messier, the better. The object is to be the player who earns the most pencils. On your turn, you have a chance to get a pencil by removing it from the pile. However, if any of the other pencils move, your turn is immediately over and the next player gets their chance. You go around like this until all the pencils have been removed. Whoever has the most pencils at the end wins. And you have to do their homework for a week. Maybe. And that's Pencil Pickup. Cafeteria game number five, Dots and Boxes. Make an even grid of dots. The more dots you add, the longer the game will go. Players take turns connecting two adjacent dots with one horizontal or vertical line. When a player completes a fourth side of a square by connecting the last line of that square, they claim the square by writing their initial inside of it. The player who claims a square gets another turn to draw another line. The game ends when all possible lines have been drawn and no more squares can be formed. 
The player with the most claimed squares at the end wins. It's super simple, super fun. Enjoy. Cafeteria game number six, Gummy War. Gummy War is a delicious game of squishy bear carnage. What you'll need are sittable gummy bears and a small rolling object, like a marble or a tin foil from your PB&J. Split up the gummy bears between two players. Each player sets up their bears in a formation. Players then take turns rolling their foil cannonball. If the cannonball hits your opponent's gummies, you can take it off the table and eat it. This goes on and on until one player's gummies have all been eliminated. The winner can choose to eat their remaining gummies or share them with the losing side, which is the nice thing to do. Cafeteria game number seven, Pencil Catch. Pencil Catch is a super easy cafeteria game. Each player will need at least five unsharpened pencils. The game is more fun if you have more than five though. Just make sure each player has the same amount. Each player holds the pencils with the back of their hand facing the table. On the count of three, three players let go of two, the pencils, one. flip over their hand, and try to catch as many pencils as possible. Whoever has the most pencils at the end wins. Cafeteria game number eight, Sorting Frenzy. This can be played with a big bag of any colored candy. Open your candy bag or bags and split all the colors evenly among all the players. If there are any extra leftovers, whoever provided the candies can eat them. When all players have the same amount of each color, mix them up in a pile in front of each player. Each player holds one hand behind their back. Now have a friend call out one of the colors. Three, two, one. Blue. All players will use their free hand to pick up and eat blues one at a time. If you're the first to get all of your blue ones in your mouth, shout, done. done. If you're a player who has leftover blue candies, you must eat those first in the next round before you can eat the next color, red. Sorry. Same rules for the leftovers. After you get through all the colors, call out the last Three, color. Two, one, brown. If you're the first to get all the brown candies, shout done. done. The player who's out of their candies is the winner. The winner earns any of the remaining candies from the other players. Thanks for sticking around. Now let's make an origami fortune teller. How to make an origami fortune teller. Start with a piece of paper and turn it into a square. To make it into a square, fold the top corner into two equal triangles. Fold over the excess several times and tear it off. You now have a square piece of paper. Next, take the other two corners and fold them diagonally in half to form another triangle. The intersection point between the two creases is your center point. Fold each of the four corners of your square into the center point. Flip over the paper to the smooth side and fold the paper in half both ways, making rectangular creases and forming a new middle point. With the smoother side of your paper facing up, fold in the four outer points equally to the center line. Now you should have four finger pockets for your fortune teller. Insert your thumbs and index fingers to make sure that this is correct. Take your four inner flaps. Gently tear each halfway so you end up with eight inner flaps instead of four. Now it's time to decorate and label the fortune teller. Choose colors, numbers, shapes, or something even more unique for the four outer squares and each of the inner eight flaps. Under each flap, write a different fortune. Your fortune teller is now complete. Fortunes can be told by having a friend choose the outer object or word. The fortune teller spells it out like this, each letter or digit getting a move. Your friend then requests one of the inner flaps and the fortune teller moves the indicated times for those. Lastly, your friend picks a flap and the fortune teller reveals the fortune. I hope it's a good one. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video and I'm checking out our top eight school cafeteria tabletop games. If you've got some school tabletop games you love to play, please drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to keep that knowledge alive. Thanks for watching and see you next time on Playing Games.